Hey guys, John here with Terminal Goblin Games, and today we're going to be talking about Floor 4 of Castle Black Falcon Mega Dungeon. It's been a little while since I've made a video, uh, mainly because my players haven't gotten any deeper in the dungeon, so I didn't need to make a Floor 4 yet, and also some technical issues and, uh, you know, boring stuff everyone says. Uh, but anyway, let's get right into it. So, uh, this is going to be the floor with the Heaven's Gate, which is the original reason my party even came here, and maybe even yours, uh, as I'm going to have this as like a possible plot hook for uh, you to use with your players, assuming you're a DM and you're not just watching this for fun, which if you are, you know, thanks man. <laughs> and I'll talk about the Heaven's Gate near the end here. So I started making this map around that sloping passage from the previous floor uh, and it's going to come into a landing with like nothing really special except for these two doors. Uh, this was mainly to trick the players into coming to a different floor unless they have like a door for something that is. Uh, so the door to the east leading to room two is going to be slightly ajar. I noted to have your players roll a trap roll, but to give them a bonus because what's going on is there is a bucket atop that door that contains a shrieker mushroom, which will start yelling if it's dropped. Uh, this will of course alert monsters nearby, which you can play as uh, alerting what's in room 3 or simply forcing a wandering monster check. And uh, I got the shrieker bucket idea from this pay what you want book on drive through RPG. It's on the screen right now. And it's called Traps for All Tastes by Old Raging Barbarian. This was like a spiders in a bucket trap, but I thought a shrieker would be funnier. Because, you know, just think of opening a door, getting bonked on the head, and then this thing's like, ah! <laughs> At least I think it's funny. This is the, the slapstick floor, as <laughs> you'll see later on. Um, and anyway, since I mentioned move three, let's talk about it. It's going to be a family hall, uh, basically a big barracks room full of barracks, uh, full of beds and stuff. I didn't draw any beds here uh, in this drawing footage, so here's what the room looks like afterwards. And there's actually going to be an ochre jelly in here, hanging out between floors of, or the doors of room one and two, uh, in case something comes by uh, after tripping that shrieker bucket. Um, this is the thing that I, I like doing. I like thinking of like how all this stuff uh, interconnects. Uh, got some people call it like dungeon ecology, I think is the word. Uh, but yeah, that's just, that's cool stuff. Uh, so all of the beds in the family room here, is, or family hall, is going to be, uh, they're going to be nice and untouched, like all made, very orderly. So the dwarves that lived here didn't run away. This was a planned thing to leave. And it'll, uh, you know, give them some creepy vibes if the ochre jelly didn't do that. Uh, room floor, it's a janitor's closet, nothing exciting. Could be a hiding or resting place for the players. Five, we have a police station. And the hallway in here has a trap. And uh, going back to the Traps for All Taste books, we took a springboard trap. It's just a pressure plate on top of a spring, and when activated, it launches the player into the ceiling or wall. Simple, effective, and hilarious. That's what I meant when I said the slapstick dungeon earlier. Uh, room six and seven, just guard rooms and a prison. Nothing in here, just keeping them immersed and to show that this used to be an active town. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm finished going room by room. There's like 20-something rooms in here, so I'll just kind of go by sections now. Uh, here in the north, we have a church, uh, complete with a wash basin, basin and a confessional. And the wash basin is going to be like a holy thing, you know, cleanliness is godliness after all. And to tie it into that riddle on floor one, if you remember, where it's uh, they had to throw water on the doors to find the correct uh treasure room and to not fight the i think it was it wasn't a white it was like a shadow or a shade or something anyways over to the east on top here we're going to have the head priest room and that's going to have a secret door to a hallway that leads to the throne room and it's also going to contain a bug out room and an emergency armory in that hallway so this is going to be kind of like an escape hallway you know stuff starts going bad in the throne room you can head out to the priest room and that armory is going to have a Dwarf Forged Halberd, uh, which is effectively a plus one halberd, and it grants the user dark vision. We're also going to have a scroll of minor warding, which I took from the Basic Fantasy RPG Librum Magica supplement, and then a scroll of web, because my players need more spells. Well, they say they need more spells, <laughs> I should say. Uh, you know, kind of going, keep going to the east, the throne room there. It's all busted up from the orcs, uh, but deserted. They moved up to floor three since the orcs or or uh, <laughs> the orcs are trying to get to the castle uh, main floor because they want to come here and you know kill Jasper. So they just busted this place up and then they moved on up. Uh, Twenty two there, but they're going to have a squad of orcs hanging out. 
uh, guarding, you know, guarding the way down, all that fun stuff. And, uh, you know, we'll move down here to the south. South, we're going to have a mushroom farm, and it's going to be inhabited by some mushroom men. Big, tough dudes, you know, straight out of Dark Souls. <laughs> uh, these guys are pretty tough. They got 17 AC, 4 hit die, and they have a one-time use poison cloud attack. Uh, my players, and yours probably, got uh, lucky that I only rolled an 8 on a 46 for their lair. And uh, they're going to have a Type C treasure, but I have a feeling that my players are just going to nope out whenever they feel imminent poison. And uh, Mushroom Guy is on the screen now. And, uh, you know, finally, let's talk about the Heaven's Gate. Up on screen is my illustration of it. Sorry about the poor drawing skills. Uh, hopefully I got it across. It should be, you know, it's like a like an ellipse on top of a platform. At least that's what I was going for, but, you know, we'll see. So, um, this is actually going to be powered down, but with a secret door check, or just if dwarfs in the party, they'll be able to find the on switch. Once flipped, it's going to crackle with a blue-green power, almost like electricity, and then allow whoever to walk in and be transported to the corpse of the Sky God, uh, which is another dungeon full of mutated dwarves, which I, uh, I haven't mapped yet, but, uh, you know, <laughs> it's on the, the ever, ever-expanding to-do. And, uh... Yeah, that's really, that's about it in here. Oh, damn, I didn't talk about the rust monsters in room 10. Uh, there is actually some rust monsters in room 10, uh, which the players will have to either kill or go around, um, which is what that secret tunnel is for. Aside from, you know, keeping the world consistent, it's also to give the players a way to get to the Heaven's Gate without messing with these rust monsters. Uh, but yeah, no, that that is it. That wraps it up for room for floor four, room four. Jesus, I can't talk. It's it's been too long. I've lost my ability to communicate. Uh, hopefully, you all enjoyed this video, and it feels good to be back. I'm working on a couple projects. I'm working on a Morrowind video, uh, and then a se settlement generation supplement for all your on the fly housing needs. Uh, I'll have a release video or whatever when that's ready. It's just going to be a PDF and then like a, an HTML file with some JavaScript to generate for you if you don't want to roll or if you don't have like the room or whatever. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. See ya.